Three years ago I decided to learn how to make video games that I shared with my friends only for a long time until I then came up with the idea of sharing that on YouTube. Today, three years later of doing YouTube, we are going to have a look at all of the 40 games I made. And if you like what you see in this video, feel free to subscribe, it would really mean a lot to me. So let's jump back to February 2020 where I started to create my first game. Of course I did a mistake here that almost all game dev beginners do. Because my first project ever was my dream game. I imagined a game that feels just like Super Paper Mario which also was the game that inspired me to get into game development in the first place. I worked on this for a couple months but in June I decided to quit this game because it obviously was too difficult to make for me at the time and I was extremely overscoping the size of this project. In the end we got a total of two levels and an intro level. On top of that the game features a system of currency and a single enemy type. And also as you can see obviously I did use some assets here and there for the graphics. Next we got my first ever finished game, Robots, which I started to create in June 2020. This endless runner game with a total of 15 characters and four levels was the first project where I decided to really focus on learning about the code side of game dev and my first of two mobile games. This is why I didn't draw any of the art for this game but I did create all of the art for the next game which some of you might already know. Hidden is a stealth mobile game with the twist of being literally impossible. I think the game has a nice concept and feel but you can notice the obvious lack of experience when looking at the blurry pixel art where I forgot to change the settings and the fact that not even I as the developer have ever beaten this game in three years. It's a simple game but still to this day I like to look back at this project. I kind of really like it. Also we got Time Controls which is my first ever game that I published on itch.io for the GMTK Game Jam hosted by Mark Brown in July 2020. Ironically it even is a 3D game which I've never done before and only one more time in the following three years. As you can see it's one more and also the Last time I used assets for graphics. Furthermore, the gameplay isn't too good as the point of the game is that the controls change every now and then, which makes the game just hard to enjoy and a little bit annoying. The theme of the gem was out of control, but my interpretation wasn't very fun and the objective of the game was only to collect these things here. I didn't really know much about game design and thinking of game ideas following a certain theme was very difficult back then. Now I just made a little 2D shooter called Box Wars in the same month which has a simple art style using shapes only and I experimented with 2D lighting and post processing for the first time. But I couldn't wait long to join another game jam to try it another time. This ended up being the Brackets game jam hosted in August and I created a story game called The Future of Games. This game really told me something important about game development. Because I really overscoped again. So I implemented three different game levels each with their own game mechanics and that way I just focus on quantity rather than quality. The game offered a lot, however nothing was really good and polished but just very rough instead. In total we got a top down game like the original The Legend of Zelda, a reverse tower defense game and a speedrunning platformer widely mixed in a single game. To switch between levels you either complete a level to go to the next level or die to go to a previous level. Next on the list I took part in the extra credit jam with the theme Take Care so I made this game called Be Careful in which you shoot pills at various like enemies. This game was made in the time where Covid was going around so for me it was obvious to make a game with viruses, pills and even a mask that you can put on to be invincible. It doesn't really have a proper goal but there's the counter how many enemies you have killed so it's basically a high score game. In my opinion this is also the first game jam game where I chose the right scale for the time available to me. And now we got another game with 3D graphics but this time it's a 2.5D game where I even created the graphics myself in a low poly art style. This game is called Slime Rush and it's a simple endless runner that I made as a mobile game but in a WebGL browser so maybe not the best idea I ever had. 
So I joined the first ever Wim Jam that had a twist in comparison to the previous jams I participated in. Because there was not only a theme as always but there was also a jam focus. The jam focus was collectibles and the theme for this jam was back and there. So I created a missing software. It's a Celeste like platformer where you need to collect the software cards and when you download these at the download station you can get to the next level by going back to the start. In total there are only 10 levels because I spent a majority of my time working on the player movement and as you can see this is in my opinion at least the first game where I varied about the game juice and polish. Now that it was October I wanted to join a rather special jam without a theme that you have to follow but you have the whole month of October to make a game. Along with this challenge called Deftober I then uploaded my first videos on the channel. To be exact I made a video every single day to document the progress on the game. With this the already low quality of my <laughs> videos back then got even worse but I didn't really care about that back then. When making this game and the videos I just noticed more and more that I've completely overscoped the scale of this game that was called Halloween Night at the time but I still didn't want to give up. I also met Chris Cola for the first time who composed the music for this game but at the end of Deftober I still wasn't even close to finishing that game. So a game jam game quickly turned into my new long term project. After Deftober I first overhauled the complete art side of the game and I worked on a second area. Just after that I renamed the game to once up in a nightmare and I worked on things like atmosphere and so on. But I always had a huge problem with the game because it never had that special feature that makes the game stand out. So after some time struggling to get that one idea I quickly lost motivation and I moved on to my new projects. But while working on Once Up in a Nightmare, I also made 5 more games. First on this list there's Skillball, made in 3 days for the completion jam, hosted by Danum. It's a simple game where you have to move the ball into the hole without touching an obstacle or wall. To make this a little bit more challenging, I implemented a timer, so you have to be faster than that. To my surprise, I even was able to reach 11th place in the overall category, which was by far the best result of a game jam for me. Planet Runner, which is my first game of the year 2021, was made for the third Blackfawn Pro Jam in one week. The theme for the jam was less is more, so I decided to keep the game both simple and let the planet shrink over time so less size is more challenge. On top it is a one button game so that really adds up to the simplicity. For the Brackies jam with the theme Stronger Together I then created Escape, where you can switch between multiple characters and solve puzzles. This was the first time I designed puzzles and to be honest I really like doing this. So my next game was of course another puzzle game. It is called I Wanna Die and following the theme failure is progress the goal is to make the player character die. Whereas you usually try to dodge spikes and pick up heal items you have to do the opposite of that in this game. And when I thought I'd reached the highest score I could with skill ball I reached third place in the category of simplicity with this game in the Huawei Jam number 3. For all of these games I always published a devlog video, but the next game is one where I haven't made a video. This is The Link Factory, a game where you have to dodge the obstacles by rotating parts of your machine. You have to protect the hard parts of your machine and if you lose one your score timer works a third slower than before. This was also quite a success because I reached first place in the category graphics in the Denny's Basement Jam. Now let's move on to games that were created after the development of Once Up and Nightmare. For example, we got Smasher. This is my first ever and so far only online multiplayer game. To be honest, I really want to create another one sometime soon. But anyway, Smasher is a co-op high score game where you are given two hammers. With these, you have to destroy these shadow enemies and don't take damage as you have shared health points. It's not a very complex game but it was still quite fun playing this with a friend when recording the footage for this video. Next we got another multiplayer game but this time it's a local multiplayer strategy game. And as you can see Senjaiku is a simple grid based game where you place units to attack the castle of the enemy and defend your own. You can choose between three different maps which all have a different grid pattern and starter units but that is all for this one. So now let's get to a game that most of you might know. This is Osor, a shoot em up roguelike game that I worked on for 18 months and released on October 26th. 
2022. That game is my first ever finished big project and it has to offer 4 unique areas with 3 levels each and a boss in between every area. For the music I also worked with Chris Kohler again who also worked with me on Once Up in a Nightmare which was the cancel project that I talked about earlier in this video. And if you want to learn more about the development of Osor, I have made a complete devlog series on this very channel here so you can watch that. Now as with Once Up in a Nightmare I obviously made some games during the development of Osor. To be exact I made 15 more games beginning with Drill Cave, which is a submission to the 48th Ludin Dari Jam where I had to follow the theme deeper and deeper. As a result, you can't jump in this platformer game, but you can use your drill on breakable blocks which also gives you a little bounce. This way there are all sorts of challenges just like jumping across a gap using the drill. And to improve the overall atmosphere, I experimented with this monochrome art style and the super talented music composer Goody created this. And as it seems, not only I like this music so much, but also many other participants of the jam because we reached 22nd place in audio. On May 18th I then took on a quite different challenge because I wanted to make a video where I challenged myself to create and publish a game in just one hour. I also did end up releasing this game but I then noticed that it wouldn't result in a good video so the game called Color Flight is just kind of a leftover of a cancelled video idea. After all it's just a simple flappy bird game with the little addition of different colors. After this I joined the 2021 edition of the GMTK Game Jam which was my first ever Game Jam in 2020 as I told you earlier in this video. This time the theme was joined together and I had 3 days again to make a game so I made Double Hop. In this game you control 2 player characters at once and with that the movement of both characters is joined together. What is not joined together however is the health points of the characters so if one dies the other one is in a sudden death state which means a single hit is enough to end the run, no matter how many health points this character still has left. For the music I also collaborated with Ofra who is another so talented music composer. Another game and another game jam were completed, so let's get to the next one. This time I joined the Ben Bong jam together with fellow game dev and friend Xtopi, who was responsible for the programming part and I was responsible for the art, which was a completely new experience for me because I always had to do both before. In the end we unfortunately didn't finish the game called Tenebrous Hotel and the bug made the second level unplayable, but I still like how the game looks and feels. Now we got to my first ever subscriber special which was the one for 100 subscribers here on YouTube where I tried to make a game that is just 100 by 100 pixels big. So Tiny Shooter is a simple arcade like top down shooter with a high score implemented. I still remember how challenging it was to get everything important on the tiny canvas without annoying the player while playing but I think I still managed to do that quite well. A couple of videos later I then tried another challenge and this time I had to make a blend and boring game feel, sound and look a lot better in just 2 hours. This polished version of Pong is also the only game I made for a video that I didn't publish in the end. But it also isn't too interesting for today's video, it's just regular Pong with RTX on. So let's move on to Sea Saver, which is a submission to the Sea Jam hosted by Polymars and Baji for the Team Seas movement by famous YouTuber MrBeast. There wasn't a specific theme for the jam, but the goal was that as many people as possible make games related to ocean preservation to spread the movement even among the game dev community. Sea Saver turned out to be more of a calm game with great atmosphere and you need to remove the trash from the ocean without hurting the fish for a little challenge in gameplay. Now before the game I'm now going to talk about I used to draw on an iPad with Procreate which is a great app and all but in December I bought a new drawing tablet and finally got to use Adobe Photoshop. So this game called A Hidden World was a real art experiment for me. I wanted to try out the new possibilities and I just wanted to use the drawing tablet a lot so I made a game where I could focus on the art rather than the code. After all this game has a great atmosphere and style but it isn't too complex in gameplay. All you need to do is to activate these stars here and reveal some constellations. 
As you might have noticed before, it took me a really long time to gain 100 subscribers on this channel, but the 200 didn't take long, so this is Web Grapple, a game that I made in under 2 hours for my 200 subscriber special. It is a rather simple rage game where you need to climb up using these webs and the grapple mechanic. Although that might sound easy to you, it can be quite frustrating at times even as the developer, but at least it is doable. Square Defense was not only a new challenge for a video, but it was also the beginning of a little challenge series. With this Tri Speed and Planet Defender, I took on the challenge of making good looking games by using only one shape each time. For now, I challenged myself to do this with the square, circle, and triangle. And to be honest, I still wouldn't say that there won't be a new video in this series at some point. But in between these games, I also remade the visuals of my game Planet Runner, so we could see how much I've improved and I also tried making a 3D game for one more time. Here I noticed that I really don't have ideas for making FPS games, so you just have to collect these orbs. But after Tri Speed, I did a polish challenge from before where I polished Pong again, but this time with this simple clicking game. You are not allowed to touch these borders with your mouse, but you have to click the squares to continue. And so I had two hours to also make this game feel, sound, and look a lot better. The last jam I took part in for now was the Ludum Diary 50 jam, with the theme The Lady Inevitable. And so I created Delay Your Death, where you're always going to die at some point, but if you delay it long enough, there will be a portal created on your death so that you can move on to the next level. Although that might sound like a cool concept to you, getting through a level is a bit tedious and it takes a lot more time than it should take. But it's still a pretty cool game. And then I took a break. I released also in October as said earlier and after that I spent my time on just other stuff than game development. But in December I was hyped to return with my 500 subscriber special. I created Count to Chaos, a game in which a machine counts to 500 and sends out deadly foes. Every time it counts there will be a different attack pattern, so this is a video game boss that has in fact 500 different attacks. A week later I made another game which was a Christmas themed game because it was the 24th of December when I published this video and a related game of course. A Christmas Village is a simple puzzle game where you have to arrange the different buildings and manage the harmony. In total I added 10 levels with a couple of different building types that were all Christmas themed. And almost a month later, I then challenged myself to turn a YouTuber, in this case Mr. Beast, into a video game. I was inspired by the videos where you're not allowed to leave a red circle, so I turned that into a survival or base building game. I also added a high score but as money, because that is actually a big part of Mr. Beast's videos. Lastly for challenges, we got the one where I remade one of my first games, Hidden, which is the stealth game that I talked about at the very beginning of the video. I remade both the visuals, which look a hundred times better in my opinion, but I also fixed the issue of the game being impossible and I also added proper levels to make it fit the puzzle theme I wanted to go for a lot more. And last but not least, we got my current project, Case of Umbro. It's a mix of digging and a combat part combined in a roguelike game, but it is obviously still in development, so I post devlogs every few weeks on the new progress made. If you don't want to miss this devlog series or any new game I'm going to create in the future, it would mean the world to me if you subscribe to this channel. And if you want to play any of the games shown in this video, a link for every single release game is in the description. This video was so much work so I would highly appreciate it if you watch it until now but it was also really really fun for me looking back at all these memories and all the 40 games thank you so so much for watching cheers